Well, today we're going to stick to what I said at the end of the last episode. We're going to make some sliders and repair the guards. Uh, we're going to be repairing those guards with this bit of junk. So let's get into it. Righto, time to go. It's not flash. We pushed on too far and now the pub's shut. <laughs> it's 10 past 10. I reckon you're a bigger bogan. about at this point you really question your life choices. It's most definitely going to catch on fire. <laughs> Pretty bad. Yeah. Right, four else fails. Yeah, that's right. Don't tell people that we know <laughs> what we don't know what we're doing. Don't forget, when installing new suspension like this, make sure you lube your pin. It actually sounded like I knew what I was talking about for once. It's rare. Oh! I'm sure that's how panel beaters do it. Well, I hope not, but that's how I did it. Sweet. Here you go, love. You've earned it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Righto, you guys might think I'm mad, but I found these pieces to repair the bottom of the guards on a mate's property. And uh, look, they're not, they're not the prettiest pieces but they're well within the whole scope of lands, being that they're not too nice. So we are going to weld these in. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of any bit of paint left on them because I don't want any different colors on lands. Funnily enough, this one here has been um, painted like a cream color, but was the right color to start with. Whereas Lance was white and has been painted the sandy torp or beige color. So it's the total reverse of what we needed. But anyway, we're gonna get rid of all that paint. The other side is um, in just as good a condition. Actually, arguably this one's probably better once I straighten it out. So yeah, I'm probably mad for repairing the guard with pieces that then need repairing themselves, but it's well within how the project's supposed to look. So I've already got one guard off, so we'll start on the uh, right hand side. I do try and do all the cutting with the angle grinder at the back of the shed. These things throw sparks where you don't even realize half the time and they leave rust spots on everything. Uh, for this little project, when I do the cutting in the shed, I'll just be pretty mindful of shooting the sparks out the door. So we'll get in and start cutting this guard where it needs to be cut a uh, little bit at a time till we can maybe, might even just tech screw it together and then do a single cut around. That way we know that it will line up. If it works, uh, it'll be the way to do it. If it doesn't work, forget I ever did it. So before we go ahead and weld this on, uh, we will go through and straighten it out and I probably will have to cut a little bit of steel out and weld a little patch in it but other than that she's um yeah probably as good as the rest of Lance. There's no point making it too straight because what I'm welding it to definitely isn't. Um, but that's flattened out enough. We'll go ahead and start cutting so I can tack it onto the old guard. Then we'll test fit it before we fully weld it out. So what I've done is I've just marked it about 20 mil too long. So the idea is I can cut the lip off the outside edge of the guard, slip it up in there, maybe put a couple of tech screws in it, run the angle grinder of a cutoff blade around, and then those two cuts will perfectly match up. The only way I know how to do that is because I watch YouTube also. Um, it is a wealth of knowledge. This piece here is still the factory cut on the, the guard I'm repairing. So I need to use this as a datum point for how long the repair piece needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a slice and make this exactly the right length. And that'll give me a datum point for the rest of it. So if I cut back to where that text line is there, that's how far the guard needs to slide up. Mm. 
Okay, so I think that's where it's supposed to sit. It is pretty hard without a reference guard here to know exactly what length it is. That's why I might tack it on and then we'll try and fit it. See if those are the original holes in the guard that are still there, uh, being these two here, that actually bolt to the body. If they line up, we'll, or are close to lining up, we know we're on the right path. Yeah, we might chuck a couple of tech screws in there. Um, we'll weld those holes up later, but that'll hold it together while I do a nice, neat cut. Um, we'll do this how I think, I think the professionals do it. Better still, uh, I had the uh, one eighth bit in the drill. That seems like a good idea to me. Couple of pot rivets, that'll hold it while we cut it. <laughs> Before we cut it right through, I am going to go through and start tacking it um, while it's still held just with that pot rivet and work my way to the outside. Uh, I think this will work guys, so uh, let's get into it. Just before I do that, I will wire wheel or clean a bit of this paint off. Uh, it'll make welding a little bit easier. So the key is lots and lots of little welds. You don't want to start blowing holes or you'll be chasing it forever. Um, and as you work along, make sure that the two panels line up. Okay, so I'm going to continue chasing that and just little welds, little welds, making sure the two surfaces are flush all the way around. I'll work my way around to the outside and I can work those two edges together, or at least I think so. All right, so we just clamped a bit of 5mm flat bar to the guard just to get the guard to sit nice and straight. It was starting to get a bit haywire with the welds and that starting to kick up. So just take your time with it, lots of little welds. Um, hopefully this works, because I'm sounding like I know what I'm talking about. I really don't. It's only from researching myself. So um, just going to prove guys that you can do these things. I'm really not experienced at it and uh, really having a ball having a go. So um, if you see something I'm doing wrong or see something to make my life easier, comment, please comment. I'm not an expert at anything, don't forget. So yeah, I'll just show you what I mean. So that, that keeps that guard nice and straight through there. And uh, <laughs> you might have a laugh about what I think straight, but that's very straight for Lance. So let's keep going, keep tacking along. gone ahead and done a little repair right at the bottom of the guard go through and grind it all back up again and yeah, we'll see how it looks get the wire wheel in action That part where I said I was going to try and fit it once it was tacked together, well, we might try and fit it now it's finished. I kind of missed that step. I do that a lot, but just go for it. I think it'll, I think it'll work anyway. Like seriously, we'll make it work. So let's uh, let's chuck this guard on and see how it looks. And uh, before I take all the paint off it, I haven't taken all the paint off it yet. We've, uh, that guard was actually the right colour, so we'll chuck it on and have a look. Well done. Not bad, I, I think I'm happy with it. Uh, I haven't seen it like that for a while. I actually like the look of the chop guards, so it'll take a bit to get used to, but 
No, it looks good. We are going to um, use the tray liner or bed liner paint that we use for the floors up underneath the guards. And um, all the bodywork that you do see will let go rusty, which seems completely backwards. But this is Lance. So we've got both guards on now. Um, yeah, they look really good. Really happy with that. I do have a bit of an idea. Maybe you put some, uh, some thin rusty steel strap. We might put on the outside with some older style rusty bolts that I've got off Lance. Uh, make it look like a bit of a band-aid. Look, it's not gonna be for everyone's taste, but I'm really going for that rat rod look, not just a patinaed finish, uh, it's a bit of a crossover. Uh, look, we're gonna get in and start drawing out the chassis, the body, and the wheel line on the ground so we can start making the sliders. So I've gone ahead and got a bit of steel bent up. I'm using steam pipe in a medium wall. It's about 3.7 mil thick, something like that. It's pretty, pretty heavy duty. Uh, we got it bent up in a nice, big round radius which will follow around the back of the cab here quite nicely but first we really need to draw it on the ground so we know what we've got to work with we can use that as a template to make both sides so right eh? let's do some artwork So we've marked out a couple of lines on the floor which represent the string lines on the ute. Fun fact, I now own a Land Cruiser with the exact same track, front and rear. It is 1700 on the dot. Why the hell they could do it 40 years ago and they can't do it now, God only knows, but it's perfect. So those lines I've drawn represent the string line which is the outside edges of those tires. So we need a square reference point to then measure back everything off. So we're gonna use the rule of three, four, five. If anyone doesn't know how to do this, it is super simple. Something that I did learn in maths and I've kept for the rest of my life. So there is occasionally things you learn at school that you do use in your life. It's rare, I know, but. So the three, four, five rule is simply measuring up 300, 400 out or vice versa. And that last measurement from those to those two points will be 500 mil if that's an exact right angle. So I'll show you how to do that in a practical situation and a useful situation being this. Righto, so you're gonna have to pretend you can see this black line on the ground. You won't need to see that much detail. I can explain it enough without uh, seeing too much detail. It's pretty simple. So pick a point, put a cross on it. So that point you've just marked is the point we're gonna measure each direction off. So that point actually has to be on the line you wanna come off square, obviously. Uh, a good trick is to go on 100. So. The 100 mil mark on a tape measure is going to be more accurate than the end of the tape measure because it moves and you don't know what kind of condition your tape's in. So you go on 100 um, and it is in multiples. So we'll make three, six. So as long as you multiply and do not add, this will always work. So we'll make that 300, 600, but add the 100 that you've moved the tape. So this first measurement will be 700. Put a mark there, crossing over your straight line. So the second measurement being 400 and we doubled the first one, so we double the second one, will be 800. Hold it on 100, add that 100, that makes it 900. So we come 900 out. Now this is where you do have to guess where that third mark is going to intersect this one. So you have to you know, think, well where's square gonna be, roughly, mark it, 900. Probably just for, for this exercise, just mark both edges of your tape and see if you can get it close enough. Go back to the, the first mark you made. Because we've doubled everything, it will be a metre. So we've doubled, plus the 100 I'm hanging it over, it'll end up 1100, right? So we go on that mark, on the described mark you put on this side, mark your 1100. So where those two points intersect, you go back to your original mark on the ground here, draw a line from that mark to the new mark you've made, and then that will end up exactly square. All right, so we've got the big roof and square out. Uh, it is hard to see, guys, you'll have to trust me. 
So that is perfectly square. And you may ask, why didn't you just use the roof and square in the first place? The roof and square only being three or 400 long both ways, uh, you make those multiplications even bigger on a, on a bigger scale. It is so much more accurate than just using a, what you call quite a small square. So there you go, guys. A lot of people out there might've known that. If you didn't, it is a very useful little tool. The magic of film, we uh, ducked out the back. I've just cut a few things to length to sit into uh, position. So all these drawings I've just done make sense to you guys. That's the whole point of it. Draw it on the ground. I know where the chassis is, the body is, and where I want these rails to be in relation to the car. This will make it a lot easier to uh, weld together and hopefully it fits up pretty easy. So I've got to break the weld out now. We'll get in, tuck it all together and uh, start trial fitting. Off cuts from uh, cutting those bars to length. We'll weld them to the returns. These front pieces here that I'm welding on go back in underneath the guard. So we'll put these on and then cut them to length after we have a look at how they're going to sit. Okay, first trial fit. I'm not, I'm not 100% happy. Uh, I think we're going to suck it in closer to the cab. To me, it just feels like it pokes out past the guard a little. Uh, because we don't have a full scrub bar on this. If it was a nice set of full scrub bars and uh, the old fence gate on the front still, we'd have them out wider, continue them up with um, some scrub rails. But the whole idea of this is just to protect the body. They're not, not really a step. Uh, you might be able to get your foot on them. So we will suck it back in a little bit closer to the cab. As long as we are just outside the cab as it comes around the corner, that's all we need. And uh, I've got plenty to play with there still. So we'll suck it back in and get it very close to the width to the front guards. Okay, that's better. Uh, we've sucked it right back in. Luckily I didn't cut it any shorter because we're probably on the limit of how far it can be to be actually effective. Nice, right. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead, cut the other side. I'm gonna keep doing both sides. I won't make you guys sit through both sides. Uh, just so I can um, not get to the end of one and spend all that time and then you run out of steam to finish your last one off. So if I do them both at the same time, uh, I'll, the enthusiasm will be on both sides, not just one, and then just try and get the other one finished. So uh, I will we'll, we'll look at starting to get some pieces together to mount it to the chassis before we go crazy uh, fully welding anything up, because uh, that'll be probably one of the harder bits. But firstly, we'll just cut the other side to match that side, and then we'll look at some brackets for the chassis. Alright, so we've marked that up. We're just going to cut that to the shape of that upright so it's not so ugly sticking out. It means I'll be able to bolt these side steps or sliders uh, through the tray mount and then two through the chassis. Okay, so this is the bracket I've come up with. We've set it in place. I've marked out where I can put some bolts. I'm going to get three 10mm bolts in it. And then I've got a bit of an idea of how I'm going to gusset it up underneath to strengthen it up even further. So we'll go ahead, drill the holes in it, and bolt it to the chassis, and then I'm gonna tack the rail in position so I know it's right. 10, 10, 10.5. Sharpen first, sharpen first. Every time I go to cut something, drill something, there's always a little step beforehand. <laughs> I well, know, very much freehand. We'll see how we go, because uh, we've got the old wire wheel on here now. I don't have a proper wheel to sharpen a drill bit, so we use a multi-tool. I reckon that'll be close enough. I well, know, we've got all our holes in our brackets now. We'll go and clamp these to the chassis and uh, transfer these holes through. Bolt them up and then we can uh, 
go about trying to attach the sliders to these rear mounts. Look at then making some front ones. This isn't gonna to be too bad. Right, uh, it just so happens that about center of this bracket or center of the chassis is going to be damn near close enough to being exactly the height I want. So that, uh, that'll look purposeful if I go center of the chassis with the slider. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to mark that up. We're going to just slice a bit out of the side of the slider here so it comes over closer to the tray bracket there. Right, so they're fully welded out and they're bolted on in place. That worked pretty well. So I've got a design for these front mounts now, but to do that, we'll have to take these front guards off and the exhaust. Right, so that's the plan. We're gonna bolt this piece of plate on here and start building everything off that, add some gussets to it. Um, yeah, I think that'll work right. It, it'll be a bit awkward because we're working with round bar. But yeah, we'll get that bolted on and then just start um, cutting, grinding, and trying to create something that looks neat and is also functional. Well, right, we'll uh, go and bolt the other side on. We'll do them both together at the same time. So I don't lose motivation on the second side because um, it's usually what happens, you finish one, especially when you're doing something repetitive like this, you gotta do the second one and um, either you get interrupted or you run out of time or you just lose motivation. So good to keep both sides at the same stage all the way through. Right, I've got the first little piece of plate in there. Uh, I'm just going to keep building it all out of flat plate. It's going to be quite a weird looking little bracket. Go and get friendly with the angle grinder. Um, yes, I know it's not a circle, but the size of the welds that'll be going on this, it won't matter. You won't see any of that. Uh, it is really hard to show you what's going on in here. I'm just trying to get enough strength in this bracket so I can pull it back off and finish it off on the bench. I don't want it moving once I take it off because all the bolts are done up nice and tight. I know it's in the right spot. So I'll get this last piece tacked on. We'll go and do the same to the other side and then we'll rip them off and put them on the bench and fully finish the bracket off on the bench. That's enough for welding underneath the car. <laughs> it looks pretty crazy. There is a method to that madness that you see under there. Well, at least I think so. So we'll try and make that look like a masterpiece when we pull it out. So I'm gonna go across and do the other side. I'm gonna turn the radio on guys and I'll see you when I got that finished. Righto, before we go fully welding it out, I'm gonna cut the remaining piece of tube off here and then I can put a gusset down in between these two pieces. For any of you guys out there that don't do heaps of this, you do get a key with the angle grinder, don't bother with it. Uh, when you're changing blades so often, lock the, lock the disc, give it a pull with your hand. I've never had one come undone, and it means that that won't lock up either. That's some, sometimes they can over tighten themselves from using them, um, but that's plenty to do it up.
just run out of welding wire and I do actually have some on hand, which is freaking rare because uh, not being a professional shop, usually you just go and buy things when they run out, but I've got spare. So we'll uh, change that spool over. No doubt this will be a pain in the ass as uh, the welding handle's a bit sad. So it's a bit hard to get fed back through. So we'll run through how to do it. Do keep note of how it all goes together because uh, being a little shop like this, it's very rare I change the spool over. One spool could last me over 12 months. So just keep an eye on how it all goes together. Uh, it's not rocket science, but... And don't let the end of the weld wire go until you've got it in the actual welder. You don't want that to unravel. That's a very expensive um, roll of wire to lose. Center of the spool back in. So you just have to play around with the tension on the spring. That is just so the spool doesn't unspool. Great choice of words. Now we can grab the end of the wire gently. So we've got the wire feeder here. Let that go. The top wheel pops up. Feed it into the guide and then into the liner. Put your wheel back down. All right, hot tip two, these are adjustable. You can adjust the tension on the top wheel as to how much force is put onto this wire to feed it in. You want that to be just enough so if it sticks in the tip of your welder, it spins on the wire and doesn't bunch the wire up because then you've got to refeed it. So now we've got it fed into the machine. You want to have your handle and the cable and your, your liner rather. Uh, just pretty nice and relaxed, no sharp turns in it. A lot of the times the welder will have a spooling out button, which you pull the trigger, that's how fast it turns, or you can use your spool, it just does it quicker. Just keep an eye on what's happening if you use the spool button. As it gets closer to the handle, I usually just normally use the trigger, just to slow it up a bit. You can feel it coming, because my handle's a bit sad. So see how the, the rollers are spinning now? and it's jammed in the handle somewhere. So we'll pull the end of the handle apart and see if we can't find it. So we got him to pop out. All I had to do was take the actual tip off. So that's not too bad. While we're there, we will go and put a new tip on. Gasless wire seems to like fresh tips a lot. Um, I don't know whether it's the extra heat from the, from the flux core, but uh, I go through tips pretty regularly. Tips are pretty cheap though, so it's no big deal. I really only have a couple more welds to finish. So I'll just go ahead and do those. I'm gonna cut a couple more gussets for the other end of where it bolts onto the chassis. Um, really to give it a bit more strength and a bit of shape. I'm, I sort of, I know this is a creative part for me. It's not nuts and bolts. It's not fixing oil leaks. It is time consuming, but it is one of the more enjoyable parts. So we will spend a bit of time on it, make it look nice and make it strong. That's a lot of grinding guys, I will be honest. Um, there's probably four hours of grinding there. So look, when I say all these things are achievable, uh, they absolutely are, but yes, it definitely takes a lot of time. But yeah, I really enjoyed it and they freaking come up nice. So next step is get some checker plate for the top. That's on its way as we speak, but for now, it's beer time. 
Right, so we've trial fitted the side steps again. Now they're fully welded, done the bolts up nice and tight, and they sit really well. So I've got a bit of checker plate now. It's got a nice little turn down to roll over the edge of the side step. We'll cut them to shape and sit them in place, see how they look. Wonder if it fits. Well, that was like literally first go. That'll do, it's bloody good. So I'm gonna trace that, uh, make one for the other side, and then we'll test fit it as well. Tidy that up, drill some holes in it. We're ready for the powder coaters. Oh, that's bad. Ah! Oh, that hurt. Yeah, that wasn't a very well shot. Sweet. That's friggin' awesome. Well, it's been a few days, but we got the side steps back from the powder coaters. Thanks to Pacific Powder Coating and especially Joe. Uh, they really looked after us with this project and done a beautiful job again. I'm really happy with how it all turned out. The guards look good. The width to the side step looks really good. And uh, obviously the powder coating just finished it off. So we got the black theme down below, the patina above. Really, really stoked with how they've turned out. Just want to thank our sponsors, all 4x4 spares, DCS, Bisley, Conqueror, and the Wheel Deal. Without those guys, this would be very hard to do. And of course, thanks for you guys watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, share it with someone you think would enjoy this build series. We're having a ball doing it. Next episode, we're really going to dig into the wiring finally. I've been putting it off for long enough, and uh, it's time to really attack it. Don't forget, guys, you only live once. Get out in the shed and have a crack. Yeah.